and welcome to episode 24 of the Tea and Possibilities podcast. I am Nikki and this is a podcast all about knitting, crafting and making all the things here in North West London. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at hippie underscore Nikki. You can find me on Ravelry as Nikki Hippie. And if you search for Tea and Possibilities under the Groups tab on Ravelry, you will find our group there. The show notes, as always, will be on my blog and the links to everything I've just mentioned will be just down below. I always like to start by saying a massive welcome. To any new viewers, thank you so much for giving me a shot. And to my returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back every week. I hope you've got a cup of tea and a nice project to work on. There is lots to talk about this week, so let's kick off as always with what tea I'm drinking. Um, this smells amazing. This is my very first David's tea. Um, Katie of Inside Number 23 gave me this one. It is the carrot cupcake flavour. And this, right now, this is officially my first sip. It's been infusing with my alien tea infuser that I bought in Peco Tea in Edinburgh. So let's see. Mmm, mm, that's really nice. Um, it sounded a little bit gimmicky, so I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, but mmm. I really, I do like Rubois tea. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but Rubois, Rubos, um, which is the base of this with carrot and vanilla and various other things, and it's very tasty. It has all kind of billowed out of my infuser, but <laughs> all the flavours there. While I'm on the subject of tea, um, I believe I told you way back when I was in Edinburgh um, that the lovely Claire of the Beautiful Things podcast gifted me some rhubarb tea and I just wanted to say I didn't have it on the podcast but I have had it and it is really nice. I don't like rhubarb, I don't like rhubarb sweets, didn't think I was going to like it but it's got a really natural sweetness which I quite enjoy. I haven't managed to find it in the shops yet. Um, but I'm keeping an eye out for it because I would like to add that one to my collection. So rhubarb tea gets a thumbs up from me. Last time I podcast, I said that the next episode, this episode, would be slightly later because I was taking some time off work for Rich's birthday. I would be quite busy over the weekend for that. And then I was going to film just before I went back to work. Um, I was going to do that. And then I realised that I'd then have to skip this weekend's podcast because they'd end up being like three days between filming so there wouldn't be enough content so I just thought I would share it with you this weekend instead and use my time off to work on more projects so spoiler alert whipped up is pretty busy this week we had a great time for Rich's birthday we spent Saturday with some friends and on Monday, I revealed to him what his present was, which means I can tell you. Um, I'm never sure if he's going to overhear me editing. Sometimes he watches an episode, so I didn't want to mention it. But I bought him a day out at a local winery. I mean, I say local. It's in Kent. It's about as local as you get, <laughs> I guess. Um, I don't think there are any wineries in London. Um, but we got the train out to Kent and we had a tour around the Chapel Down Vineyard. We did some wine tasting and then we had a beautiful meal. I have to say, I thought that I would find the vineyard tour a bit boring. Um, I don't know much about wine beyond I quite like it. And I thought that it was essentially going to be, here's a vine, there's a vine, everywhere a vine, vine. <laughs> but it was actually really interesting um, about the way they plant and the different kinds of grapes they use and the process they actually use to make the wine, which I didn't realise was going to be included in the tour. So I found that really interesting um, and quite surprised myself by that. And then we went to have a wine tasting. I have never done wine tasting before. Uh, Rich has because he used to work as a chef, so it was part of his job. So he was really good at it and he was going grass and tobacco and leather and cinnamon and elderflower and he was pulling out all these like fancy things that he could smell and I was kind of going wine? Wine. And then I gave it a swirl and I got cheese. Literally every time I was like it smells like Stilton. That acidity, <laughs> that's what I, all I could liken it to. At one point I was like, kind of smells like B.O., but I think it was elderflower. 
<laughs> so I'm not going to claim that I was incredibly cultured and was smelling a great many things. They were delicious wines. Um, what they smelled like was no indication of what they tasted like. I, I'm not a big white or rosé drinker and I actually preferred the whites and the rosés to the red that we tried. So that was quite interesting. And then we had a three course meal in the restaurant, which is called The Swan. And it was oh, so good. Like, it was amazing. I had for a main um, chicken with mashed potato, mashed potato, it was like a cloud. It was so soft. Um, but Rich got lamb. And honestly, I took a bite of this lamb that he had because he was like, oh, you must try it. And honestly, I heard angels. It was like, it was singing in my mouth. Oh, it was... It was so delicious, it was so tasty. Um, so yeah, if you ever fancy getting out of London or if you're in Kent, I cannot recommend the Chapel Down uh, winery enough. The tour is really interesting, the wine tasting is great fun, also really interesting. And the Swan restaurant is absolutely amazing. I would definitely go there again. A few days before Rich's birthday day out though, I had a bit of an experience. I went with a friend of mine on Bank Holiday Monday to see Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead um, at the Old Vic Theatre, uh, just by Waterloo Station, and it starred Daniel Radcliffe. I mean, of course it starred other people. Um, I believe Josh McGuire played Guildenstern and the incredible David Haig, who I never thought I'd get to see on stage, and is just amazing, was in it, and he was amazing. And it was great to see Daniel Radcliffe in the flesh and doing something completely different to Harry Potter. He was brilliant. Um, he has come on leaps and bounds since Harry Potter. He's massively improved. Um, and we got to meet him afterwards. <laughs> I say that like we went out for a beer. We didn't, we queued up and we went to meet him afterwards. I will a picture on screen of the moment that I met Daniel Radcliffe and he also signed uh, my ticket for me so that was a really lovely thing to do. He was a genuinely lovely guy, he was very patient, he was clearly trying to get round people as quickly as he could while also you know giving as much of his time as he could because he was aware there was a queue of people outside waiting to come in. He just seemed like a really lovely guy um, it was you know I'm not somebody who feels the need to meet um, the people who have played characters that mean a lot to me. My friend said, you know, come on, let's go. It's a really great opportunity for us to meet him, get something signed. So I went, yeah, okay, we'll go. And I'm glad I did. He was a lovely, lovely guy. And finally, before I move on to the episode proper, um, next week's episode will be probably quite short because I am due to go to Kiev in the Ukraine for a few days for work on Monday. So... I'm not sure if I'm allowed to knit on the plane. Um, I'm gonna look into that before I go, but I don't know how much spare time I'll have in the, um, in the evenings to work on things. So enjoy the bulky whipped up content <laughs> this week while you can, because um, maybe minimal next weekend. Oh, that was a lot of nattering um, for the beginning of the show. And I should also mention before we move on finally to whipped up that I am currently running the best year ever cow. The Best Year Ever Cow is a year-long knit-along. It started on the 1st of January. It will run until the 31st of December. And it has one very simple aim, and that is that you knit four things that bring you joy this year. If knitting for others brings you joy, great. If knitting for yourself brings you joy, great. Four things that have made you really happy to work on, to finish, to have. And you could be in with a chance to win a prize. I always forget to say this, but if you do want to contribute a prize, um, anything you would like to contribute towards the Best Year Ever Cow would be massively appreciated, and you can just drop me a message on Ravelry if you would like to do that. Right then, let's move on to Whipped Up. I got a bit of a pretty thing in the post um, early last week, I think. And look, I got my very first Eldenwood craft bag. I've left the label on. It's eldenwoodcraft.co.uk because I knew I would never remember it otherwise. This is by the lovely Emma. I'm sure that everyone has already heard of her. She is incredible. 
Her Instagram is beautiful, the bags she makes are beautiful. It's probably why her Instagram is so beautiful because it's full of these beautiful bags. And she has a lovely, lovely podcast called the Eldon Woodcraft Podcast, which you should totally check out. I got my nan, you may remember, a beautiful Eldon Woodcraft bag for a Christmas present because it was covered in robins and she loves robins. And I had to treat myself to one. This is just stunning. I did want the one with the sheep on it, but unfortunately I missed out. Um, clearly everyone wanted the sheep. So I got this beautiful one covered in trees and it's just stunning. Before I go on with my blanket though, I just want to make sure you can see the beautiful inside of this bag. It's lined with a pale blue gingham and honestly the finish is just the most stunning thing. It's totally, totally beautiful. And the lovely Emma also included a Taylor's of Harrogate tea for me. Um, it's green tea with strawberry and vanilla, so I will be trying that very soon. And at the moment, my Shanghai Stripes, as I'm calling it, blanket lives in here. And as you can see, it's quite big now, um, so it may not live in here for very long. I'm probably going to put a garment in there next time, as I think... This is very shortly not going to fit in there anymore. Um, as you can see, it's quite a bit chunkier. Um, I sat down and kind of figured out how big I wanted it to be um, the other day. And I am calling this, so from this yellow here to this orange here, I am calling that one repeat. So it goes up to the dark red and then back down to the yellow again. I'm calling that one repeat. I want 10 of these in this blanket and as you can see I'm getting to the end of this particular repeat I've got to finish this row of orange and then do the pale orange and that'll be two repeats down and I've got eight more to go as I said <laughs> my friend is due to go in August so I'm wondering if I'll get it done in time we have decided um, my friends and I to put together a box, a care package to send to her for a couple of weeks after she arrives. So I don't have to have it finished for when she leaves um, because it's gonna go in a really big box full of goodies, tea, English chocolates, things like that. But I am really enjoying this. This is a really good mindless project. Um, it's just back and forth, um, changing the colors every couple of rows. I'm probably going to take this to Kiev I think, um, just because it's not one I have to think about. I can just get back to my hotel room, flop, and, you know, finish a stripe. So I think this is probably where I'd get the most work done. So yeah, I'm very happy with this. I think she's going to love it, and my only regret is that I won't be able to give it to her in person. In other news, I found the crochet hook. It had rolled under um, my bedside table and I just hadn't thought to look there. So, <laughs> crisis averted, guys. Next up, I feel quite bad about this. I have just raved about my beautiful Eldenwood craft bag. My Hortensia cardigan is living in this. I know, it's a Hessian bag that my Triceratops head arrived in. I just bundled it in there for ease. It was to hand. I don't have very many project bags. This is the first project bag I've ever actually owned. I didn't have a tote bag free. That's why I usually keep them in, canvas bags. Didn't have one free. Clearly, I just need more project bags in my life. Also, sadly, <laughs> my Hortensia cardigan is back to being barely recognisable. I'll hold it up and you'll see what I mean. This is the Hortensia by Andy Satterland and I am knitting it in Cascade 220 Superwash in the Purple Heathers colourway. So you can probably just about see that it is a cardigan. We have one sleeve, two sleeves. The sleeves are finished. I actually really enjoyed doing the sleeves. It was just mindless round and round and round um, with some increasing and decreasing. So they were fantastic. But I am now on the collar. And because I don't have a cable needle long enough free, it's kind of squished up at the moment, so I can't really see what I'm doing. I'm going on faith here, guys. It's a garter stitch collar, and it is 
lots and lots and lots of short rows so many short rows so this feels very much like something that I have to sit and do quietly this is no longer a take along with me project even though it's relatively small still it's not massive um, you know it's something I could do on a training journey but there's too much concentration in it for me at the moment so this is very much relegated to evening knitting I feel like I am doing all the short rows at the moment. Um, short rows is not something I've done a lot of, um, so I don't know how well this is gonna turn out. I'm, I'm fairly happy with the short rowing I did on these sleeves. It's just something that I think I'm deliberately going to pick some projects with short rows just so that I can do more of them because the more you do, the better you get. But yeah, and yes, I did stop in the middle of row. <laughs> Because I'm a terrible person, I started the row and then realised I was really, really tired last night and figured I would just stop and finish it today at some point. <laughs> it's like a knitting attack waiting to happen, isn't it really? But um, when I finished here, I will finish that row. <laughs> Next up is another piteous project bag. Can't even really call this a project bag. It is a gift bag. From Neil's yard that I've had for ages. Um, yeah, I used to use it as a makeup bag and then realised it's the perfect size for socks. So yeah, it's a really good size actually just for a sock and a ball of yarn. So I'm probably going to hang on to it frankly. It does need to go back into the wash because every time I pick it up I see on the front that there's like a foundation mark which is not ideal. Um, honestly, isn't this the most... <laughs> The scummy knitter who uses old makeup bags as project bags. But let me distract you with a heel! I've turned a heel, guys! I am insanely happy about this. I don't know if you can see, I've got half my stitches on this holder here, but that right there, that's a heel! <laughs> I am just so chuffed about this. I did a short row heel, um, I got to the heel and I did some googling and there are so many heels. I was just a little bit overwhelmed. There was um, an eye of partridge, heel flap and gusset, afterthought, fish lips kiss and I just thought I'm going to go for a short row heel just because it looks the most straightforward. Um, as you can see I haven't picked up um, to knit in the round again. To be honest, I've literally just finished the heel, so I don't even know if I have to pick up. I mean, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe I just start knitting in the round again. As you can see, I've never really knit a sock before, so <laughs> it's all a bit bamboozling to me. If you have any recommendations for your favourite heels, um, please let me know. I would love to know. I'm definitely going to do a short row heel on the second biscuity sock, um, because I want them to match. But the next pair I do, I'd like to try a different heel. Um, I would basically like to knit a ton of vanilla socks, maybe not necessarily vanilla. Is that running before I can walk? Knit a ton of socks and um, try a different heel for every pair. Um, so the first one kind of feels like getting the hang of the technique and the second time is just practicing the technique. And then I'll kind of know from a few different times of done, doing it which my favourite um, heel is for fit, for comfort and for actually, for actually doing. So if you have any recommendations, please do let me know and I will put them on my, my queue, I guess. But yeah, I am insanely happy about that. I've knit a heel. I feel like I have just unlocked another level of being a knitter, like I've levelled up. Heel. So I wasn't going to share this, <laughs> but something else is living in this project bag. This is the sock, um, this is one of, I should say, the socks that Vicky of Vicky Bird Designs knit for me for my birthday. And I wore them, I've worn them several times. And then because I was working on my own sock, I decided, this is my sock guide, basically. <laughs> so what I've been doing is, this fits really well. Um, I'd already done the cuff when I decided to make um, this my sock guide, so my cuff's a little bit longer. But I've been essentially 
holding up against my sock to see how long I need to knit the leg, when I need to stop for the heel. I'll um, be holding up against the foot as well, so I get an idea of when I need to stop the toe decreases. Mine, I don't know if you can see that, is a tiny bit smaller. I would say maybe four stitches smaller, um, which is something I will bear in mind when I cast on the next one. Um, but I'm thinking I have worn this one, so maybe this one will be fine, I don't know. I'm hoping so, otherwise I'm going to have to find someone with very skinny feet. They don't fit me because mine are ridiculously skinny as it is. <laughs> but yes, sock guide. So not only did I get a beautiful pair of socks for my birthday, I got a sock guide for knitting my own. So it's a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Thank you again, Vicky, I love these. I'm not really using a pattern on this, um, I am just kind of following various sock recipes I've found around the internet, um, but the yarn is Louisa Harding Amatola in the Biscuit colourway. I popped into Paper Chase with a friend of mine who needed to get some cards and bits and bobs uh, the other day, and I spotted this. In fact, I spotted several really pretty pouches in Paper Chase. Um, I'm guessing they're for like toiletries or makeup bags or maybe just for putting all the little bits and bobs you have in your handbag in one place before you put it in your handbag. But I looked at that and I thought, sock, sock knitting. As you have already seen, <laughs> I have not migrated my sock into my beautiful alpaca bag. I actually think it might be a llama because it seems to be llama, llama, llama everything at the moment, but I'm calling this an alpaca. But I do have something in this bag that I am really, really excited about and I'm so, so happy to be sharing it with you. Ta-da! Yes, I have picked up my Find Your House shawl. This, as um, I have said before, this is the Find Your Fade by Andrea Mowry. And Unfortunately, as I've said before, I have had a hell of a time with this. It just wasn't going right. I think I said that I'd cast this bit on and knit this bit five times and then I pulled out the lace a few times and I think I found the secret. So firstly, I was inspired to pick this up again after my trip to Harry Potter Studios that I talked about in the last episode. Um, I was inspired by the idea of visiting Harry Potter Studios again with Katie and Amy and having a little bit of a Harry Potter inspired knitwear photo shoot. Um, <laughs> that's my model pose, so look out for that when I finally finish this. And um, I also decided it needed a lifeline. So earlier in the week, I had finished this section here, this lace section, so I popped a lifeline in and nothing went wrong. This whole garter section, bearing in mind that this garter section here at the bottom, this tiny, tiny bit of garter stitch here, went wrong dozens and dozens and dozens of times and I couldn't do it and I was considering throwing down my needles forever. This garter section was a breeze. It was enjoyable. It was lovely. I had the best time and now, I have popped in, I don't know if you can see, because it is um, a red yarn, I'll just grab the end of it. But I have popped in another lifeline, because this is the end of this garter section, and I'm about to start the second lace section. So I'm going to do this lace section in purple, and then I will be doing um, the next colour melt um, into the blue. I've mentioned before, um, it's pretty much I think in the pattern you melt every garter section I think. Um, because I only have five colours I've changed that slightly so the beginning and end of the shawl are going to have more um, than in the original Find Your Fade. Hopefully that will work out, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, but I've been really careful, I've got my little Hogwarts stitch marker but on my lifeline, I've popped a plastic stitch marker um, just in case I do need to rip back, I will still have the marker in place. I am deliriously happy about this. I am so, so pleased. As you all know, this was my Edinburgh Yarn Festival project. I was 
really, really down, really disappointed when it didn't seem to be working for me. And I just thought, you know, I've spent all this money and I've put all this planning in and maybe it's just not going to work. And that was really sad. It was more sad than it probably should have been. <laughs> but I'm really glad that I just gave it a little bit of a time out because I just love it. And look, look at this yarn. This is Old Maiden Aunt in her Bluebells colorway on her Selena base. And it's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, just look, look at that beautiful color. And when you're up close and you're knitting it, there's these little pops of really pale blue. And they are, it is Bluebell, it's perfect. It is absolutely perfect. And it is now big enough for it to legitimately be called a Dumbledore beard. So clearly I am doing something right. I do have a few projects on my horizon. Um, unfortunately, I don't have <laughs> any more time, so I don't know how far away they are. Um, but I recently ordered a skein of Madeleine Tosh in the Earl Grey colourway, which I am waiting with bated breath to arrive. Um, I was hoping it would arrive in time for me to take as my travel knitting project to Kiev, but unfortunately, I think it's probably going to arrive while I'm away. Um, but I want to knit a hat out of that. Um, one of our friends is moving abroad and has offered us her flat um, when she's gone. So we will be moving in August into a very beautiful flat and we are incredibly grateful not to have to go through the rigmarole of viewing, you know, finding online, viewing and all the paperwork and stuff. So it's going to be a lot more straightforward um, because we don't have to find anywhere. We don't have to view half a dozen houses. And as a thank you and a bon voyage, I would like to knit her a hat. I'm still undecided on what pattern I want to use. I think cables. Um, I've got a couple on short list, so I'm gonna get Rich's opinion because she is a mutual friend and he'd probably be able to help me make the best choice there. So yeah, I've got a little hat planned for On The Needle soon. I've also recently really had my head turned by crocheted garments. I think I told you about the Frank and Olive oversized cardigan that I'd fallen in love with. I'm planning to knit that in a grey knit. Crochet! <laughs> I'm planning to crochet that in a light to mid grey cotton um, with bright neon pink cuffs and hem. That is by Frank and Olive and I, just out of curiosity, went to have a peek at what other adult patterns they've got in crochet. And she has some really amazing ones. She has got a stripy shift dress, which I think is beautiful and I would love to wear over leggings. So I've downloaded that. <laughs> and she also has a really incredible granny square jumper that I think just looks fantastic. And I would love to wear that with a pair of skinny jeans. I might put an extra row of granny squares on just to make it more of a tunic and then I can wear it with leggings because I love leggings. Who doesn't love leggings? They are insanely comfortable. <laughs> so those might be on my horizon fairly soon. I've got this feeling like crochet garments make up quicker than knitting, right? Right? I will link to all of those in the show notes because believe me, you are going to want to have a look at these. You are probably going to want to hook one up for yourself fairly soon too. So. Sorry. <laughs> Next up is some stash acquisition. Um, I don't do these segments very often because frankly, I don't buy yarn that often. I tend to decide on projects and then buy yarn um, just because of space and it saves money that way. However, <laughs> as you may have seen, if you watch uh, Inside Number 23 with Katie or the Stranded podcast with Amy, I met up with these two lovely ladies on Sunday and we had a lovely day out in London and we went to Loop. We also visited Raystitch, um, but I have left the pattern at work. So we will start with Loop because I have never been to Loop before and it is glorious. You know a shop is amazing when they just give you one of these fantastic canvas shoulder bags their aesthetic, what they have there, everything was perfect. It was like walking into Knitter's Heaven. It was, oh, I loved it. I want to go back. Take me back. So I met up with Katie and Amy outside of Loop and they were so sweet. They brought gifts. 
Um, the lovely Amy, who had had a trunk show at Alternate Universe uh, in Bristol, um, which Katie and I desperately wanted to visit, uh, got me this Hufflepuff postcard and a tiny Hufflepuff progress keeper. It's a little badger. I think this is going on uh, my next garment or potentially onto my Elderwood craft bag as a ring pull. I don't know. But I love it. I just wanted to leave it all packaged up so I could show you. Um, but the design is by Kim, who owns um, Alternate Universe, who is an absolute marvel, and you should absolutely check out her shop. So thank you for these, Amy. This will be going on the wall above my desk when we move. As I said, Katie gave me some tea. She knows I love tea. I've never tried David's tea because it's an American brand, so that was great. Thank you so much. And she got me some yarn. I have got some beautiful Arnie and Carlos um, sock yarn, which I don't know if you can see, but it knits up into this fantastic fair art design. This may have to be my next pair of socks, because I think it'd be really great fun to see the pattern knit up. Thank you for that, Katie. That was really, really kind. She gave me this amazing watermelon skein. How beautiful is this? Um, this is by, whoops, Artville hand painted yarn and is shockingly enough the watermelon smoothie colorway. Um, apparently, there is a um, recipe inside here, but I haven't undone it yet. So, as soon as I skein that up, maybe I'll be making myself a watermelon smoothie. How gorgeous is that? That's so pretty. I don't think there's enough there for two whole socks. But Amy of Stranded is knitting um, some shorty socks. I think they're called the Row City Rollers. So maybe I'll make myself some shorty socks. Be a good way to practice heels and toes, wouldn't it? And how summery would these be? I've got a fantastic new pair of um, trainers and I think this would look really cute peeking out the top of it. So thank you, ladies. You're amazing. I had an amazing day anyway, but to get gifts was just extra special. Amy had been to Yak the day before for another trunk show because she's absolutely Wonder Woman and just works non-stop and is amazing. Um, and I'd mentioned that I really wanted to get the West Yorkshire Spinners local yarn shop day colourway, but she didn't think they were going to sell it in Loop. So she picked up one for me in um, Yak in Brighton. And I love this. <laughs> I mean, you knit one sock and suddenly it's all about the sock yarn, you know? But I love this. <laughs> because this reminds me of the Starbucks Unicorn Frappuccino. For the record, I have not seen this in person. I haven't ordered it, I haven't had it. Um, I don't intend to because it looks beautiful because it is all these colours, it's bright pink and blue. I just don't know that I'd want to put that in my body. <laughs> it looks like it'd be so bad for you. So socks instead, I think. Thank you, Amy, that was really sweet of you to pick that up for me. So yeah, I was spoilt rotten before I even got into Loop to buy anything. It was really funny because we were just wandering back and forth and picking up sweater quantities of yarn and putting them down and picking up a different kind of sweater quantity of yarn. It was, it was terrible. We were so enabling of each other, but we were very good. Um, I put down the rather expensive um, quantity of yarn I was going to buy um, and decided that this was um, a too sudden decision to make just in there in the shop. I needed to sit down, I needed to calculate weight and yardage and all that good stuff before I actually committed to buying that amount of yarn. But the first thing we picked up was The Artisan by Helga Isiger which I think is how you pronounce it, but I'm really sorry if it isn't. And it is the English edition, um, of course. And this is so beautiful, all three of us bought it. Um, <laughs> they're beautiful, simple garments, and all of them have been knit in a really stunning um, neutral colour, so greys, browns, um, sort of creamy colours. So that means that when you look at the pictures, you're not distracted by, oh, I don't like that colour. Um, you are literally just looking at the garment it itself, um, its construction, its shape, all of the details, which is brilliant. My absolute favourite, I think we all fell in love with it, <laughs> was the Birch cardigan. Uh, this is towards the end of the book, 
and it is absolutely stunning. It's a kimono style cardigan with herringbone stitch. And this is the one that I nearly, nearly dropped a great deal of money on. <laughs> um, so I am working out at the moment what color I want it in. I'm thinking a kind of gray or oyster color would be ideal. And then the, because it's designed for the Isiga yarn, um, it only gives that yarn, so it doesn't actually give you the information necessary to pick an alternative yarn. So I'm going to look into this. Um, it does say that you, uh, you hold the yarn with mohair, and I can't wear mohair. It really irritates my skin. Um, I'm happy to knit with it because my hands are quite a lot hardier, but my wrists and my neck, not so much. It really gets quite itchy and unpleasant. So I need to work out what I will do instead, what kind of fibre I want to use um, and what colour and what brand. So there's going to be a little bit of thought going into this one, but I definitely want to make this. It's just too wearable and it just looks really cosy, but I keep looking at it and thinking over a pair of like skinny jeans or leggings with just a long shirt, it would just elevate your outfit. It would look so chic. And if you can't tell, I can't stop staring at it. So <laughs> that was my um, first purchase in Loop. I also picked up some buttons, which I will not be revealing because they are for my Hortensia. So I'll be showing those off when they actually make it onto the finished garment. So hold your horses on that one. But I couldn't leave without buying some yarn. Look at this! It's so beautiful, I love it so much. <laughs> this is um, Socks That Rock by Blue Moon Fibre Arts. We've all heard of Socks That Rock, right? This is just, oh, just look at it. It's so, so beautiful. I could just knit a Find Your Fade in just this and be happy. Just the yellows and the greens and the turquoises and the reds. and It's beautiful. It is beautiful. And this is the Jumping Jelly Beans colorway. And I desperately want this to be a mega pair of socks. So this will not be cast on anytime soon because, as you know, I'm still a fairly new sock knitter. This is beautiful. It was not cheap <laughs> for sock yarn. And I'm really not ready. I want to do this yarn justice. And I think this in a really simple stitch pattern, maybe Hermione's every day maybe the mercury socks, I don't know, but I want to find a beautiful pattern for this. Maybe it will, maybe it will be vanilla, but for the time being, it's just gonna be my friend. And just, just, yeah. See, I keep on at Rich that when we get our own place, that we can't have a dog yet because I work full time and he freelances, so he's in and out quite a lot. So we can't commit to, you know, being there for a dog. Cats, however, are a little bit more independent, <laughs> but he's not a big cat person. So I'm basically filling the pet-shaped hole in my heart with yarn, and I think that's fine. We then pop down to Ray Stitch because, as you all know, Katie is a sewing genius. And I think um, Amy and I were pretty, um, pretty inspired by Katie, and I did buy a pattern. It's, um, I can't remember the company. I will show it on next podcast. Um, unfortunately, I decided that I wanted to get the fabric now-ish. So I took it to work because I don't work far from the Oxford Street John Lewis with the intention of going there to have a look at fabric. I didn't get around to it and I left it at work. It's in my drawer at work, unfortunately. <laughs> so I will pick it up when I'm back in work uh, towards the end of next week and I will show it off to you on the podcast next week. And hopefully, as soon as we're settled, I will have a space to unpack my sewing machine. Um, I've talked to Rich about potentially having a space just always ready to go, because um, that's my main issue with sewing, the whole getting it all out and setting it up. Whereas knitting, you can just knit. So I'm hoping that will help me get a few more garments sewn up. Finally, finally, finally. <laughs> I never have this much stash to show off, um, but this is something that I bought on my birthday. It was my birthday treat to myself. 
um, because I had bought some Kate Sleen minis a while back and I loved them and they're beautiful and I follow her Instagram and just kind of drool all over everything she does. So I decided to treat myself to one of her socks in a box. Now, as you may remember, my birthday was back in March, um, so it has taken a fairly long time to get to me. Um, Kate's shop is currently closed. Um, she was die to order at the time, and I knew there was a fairly long lead time in the run up to getting my socks, um, socks in a box, I should say. I believe she is making some changes when she reopens her shop, but I don't know what they entail. So I would, if you do order from Kate Selene, I would just uh, recommend you do check her lead times. If it's something time sensitive, that may be something you need to message Kate about. Um, I believe the lead time on mine was about eight weeks. So that's just something to bear in mind because her stuff is beautiful. Um, it is absolutely stunning, but I'm just letting you know, don't um, overlook uh, the terms and conditions because you may end up disappointed if you're hoping to get it within a few days. Let's have a look at what was in my box. Now obviously when I bought this I had seen the picture, I knew what it looked like, but opening the box is something else entirely. The main skein is the softest, squishiest thing in the world. It is like a cloud. I absolutely love this and it is a very very pale pink with really a vibrant rainbow kind of I don't want to say speckles because they're more striped than that but I don't think this is going to knit up into a regular stripe it is stunning the colorway is called rainbow sherbet dip and that is exactly what it looks like it also reminds me of strawberry ice cream with sprinkles <laughs> it's beautiful. It came with two little cakes, a red and a blue, and I can't emphasise enough how vibrant these are, they are stunning. The packaging as well is beautiful, just opening this up is a dream. And I think I am going to do um, blue heel and toe on one sock, red heel and toe on the other sock, <laughs> with these little contrasting ones. It is a really beautiful kit and as far as I was concerned, I was ordering a big skein and two mini skeins, um, but the lovely Kate threw in some really beautiful minis. Um, the first one is called Hedwig. This is like an owly colour. I checked what this was called with Kate because when I unpackaged it, Rich immediately grabbed it and went, this is amazing, can I get it in a scarf? <laughs> so I checked what it was called and I even said it reminds me of owls and Kate said she was really glad to hear that because it's called Hedwig. <laughs> I completely forgot to ask what this beautiful orange skein is called um, but it is stunning. It's so fiery, it's so speckled and luscious and it's going to make a stunning addition to my cosy memories blanket. So thank you for the little extras Kate. Kate's branding is absolutely amazing. Um, you receive it in a red um, package with white polka dots. You take it out and as you've seen, it's wrapped up in a ribbon. Everything's got the red with the white polka dots. Um, she loves her toadstools. I forgot to include these in that little video, um, but she's included some sweet little silver progress keepers um, of little toadstools. And this one here in the middle has red enamel on it and it's just beautiful. Everything has, you know, the ribbon or this like barber pole type um, twine. It's just a lovely experience receiving something from Kate because the care she takes, second to none. Really, really beautiful. The beautiful thing about podcasting is I can show you all of that stuff and you have no idea what's going on around here. And right now I have a chair here that's got yarn on it. Um, I've got a pile of projects here and I've got some more yarn on the floor and I've got my book on a table here with my tea. <laughs> so you cannot see the carnage that has ensued with all of that. <laughs> well now you've seen everything I've been making and working on and have received in the last couple of weeks, let's move on to knit and letter. First of all, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who commented who sent me a private message um, after the last podcast. 
um, to say that they agreed with me. Um, either they loved Harry Potter as much as I did, or they had something they loved um, just as much so they understood. That was really, really lovely um, because as I've said, <laughs> no one else um, that I know is that obsessed. Maybe Katie. <laughs> but um, it's lovely to open up to you guys and kind of confess something that I did feel a little bit like, oh, maybe I shouldn't say this because I think I'm really immature. Um, but I said it and you guys, as knitters do, you came out in force and you were like, we think that's awesome. <laughs> um, and I did open up um, a thread on the Ravelry group, which I will link to in the show notes, where we are all sharing the things that we love. I want to kind of say our guilty pleasures, but we shouldn't feel guilty about them. Goodness knows I'm not guilty about Harry Potter. I mean, tomorrow is Sunday and I am going to see um, the Philosopher's Stone with a live orchestra. No shame, I'm excited. <laughs> but this week, I kind of want to talk about something not as fun as Harry Potter. Um, still something quite personal, but not anywhere near as interesting. <laughs> um, I have a confession to make. My name is Nikki, and I am addicted to sugar. So, my brief history with sugar. I was known to have a rabid sweet tooth as a child. I would have gladly eaten a pan of chocolat followed by a bowl of cocoa pops for breakfast and several bars of chocolate for lunch and dinner. That was just how I was. Um, obviously, my family restrained <laughs> this desire quite significantly, but I would, left to my own devices, that's what I would have done. I spent my pocket money on chocolate. I loved getting chocolate as gifts at Christmas. You know, when you're a teenager and you can't really afford much else at Christmas to get for your friends, it's always a candle and some chocolate. <laughs> I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Don't like sweets. Um, I'm not a jelly sweet person. I like cake. I like chocolate. I'm very, very firm on that. Cake, pastry, chocolate. That's it. Obviously, when I moved into my kind of late teens, I became a little bit more health conscious. I started doing yoga um, and I reduced. I was very much aware that I shouldn't be eating that much chocolate because it's quite bad for me. I was probably more weight conscious then, so that obviously played into it. Um, so while I had an incredibly sweet tooth and I still ate a lot of treats, I didn't go too mad. Um, Rich and I, when we were first living together, did the Sarah Wilson I Quit Sugar. We quit for, I think, six or seven weeks. And it was incredible. I wasn't working out a great deal then. I was just doing stuff at home. Um, I was doing little weights and yoga at home because we didn't have a gym nearby. Um, and that was just more convenient. But in those six weeks, I lost a lot of weight, a great deal of weight. Um, within about three weeks, I had lost a not noticeable amount, um, which was quite startling really when you think that all I had cut out was sugar. That was all I had cut out of my diet. I was still eating, you know, roast dinners and, um, you know, toast. I was still, you know, eating, you know, not a really restricted diet. So I found that quite surprising. My skin cleared up, um, my energy levels completely plateaued. Um, I've always been somebody who has really, really high energy, peep, 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 go down. I crash horrendously. And my energy levels really hit. They didn't plateau at a particularly high level, but you know, about three quarters energy was, was amazing. I found I slept better. Um, my moods were better, I didn't get as hangry, and I was just generally loads healthier. We then went on a holiday to Cornwall and ate ice creams. <laughs> and since then I've just kind of returned to, you know, eating sugar, as I had been before. Last year, as I've said several times before, was a pretty rough year, and my sugar consumption shot up as a result. I definitely used it as a crutch. Um, I worked on a second or third floor in my office um, when I was in Portsmouth and there was a shop downstairs and I would make an excuse to pop down to the shop to get sweets, partly to get away from my desk and partly to get the sugar boost because I really struggled um, to get through the day without it. I knew that was bad 
and when I moved back to London I needed to reduce that. However at work there is just a constant supply of cake and biscuits, particularly my favourite biscuits which are dark chocolate digestives. My mum also has a sweet tooth and brings treats back quite regularly so it's been really really hard. But um, as you know I've joined a gym Last week I um, was doing some weightlifting with Rich and I lifted half my body weight. So I'm getting pretty fit at the moment and I'm feeling really good about that and I'm wanting more and more to fuel my body in the correct way. I want to give my body what it needs so it can be really strong and healthy and I can feel the best I possibly can. My energy levels at the moment are again back to really violent peaks and troughs. Um, there are points, usually about four o'clock in the afternoon, where I could just go and have a nap, <laughs> uh, which is not ideal. And I have said the last couple of weeks, every time I've got up, I've gone, I'm not going to eat any sugar today. I'm not going to have any of the treats. I'm going to have my porridge. I'm going to have my hummus carrot stick snack. I'm going to have my healthy lunch. I'm going to have my dinner and if I want a sweet treat I'm going to have a hot milk with cinnamon which is a sweet treat that I found I really liked when I was doing I Quit Sugar a few years ago. That hasn't happened. Someone always opens the, the Choco Leibniz or the dark chocolate digestives or they bring you know an amazing uh, chocolate that I've never tried before because they've just been on holiday and I can't say no. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> and I can't be the only one that struggles with this. I really, really want to quit. I realised the other day I was working, I had a cup of tea and I was eating this biscuit. And then I looked down because I brought two biscuits to my desk and I looked down and realised the other one was gone. I hadn't even noticed I was eating it. I am so used to eating sugar now that I do not enjoy it at all anymore um, because I barely even register that it's happening. So... <laughs> Why am I talking about this on the podcast? I'm talking about this because if I put it on the internet, I kind of have to stick to it because I'll feel really stupid if I don't. And because maybe there's somebody out there who feels like me, who feels they really want to stop, but it's really hard. Um, I don't want to quit sugar forever. I don't want to say I will never eat sugar again because cake's really nice. You know, I had macarons with the girls on Sunday and that was lovely. It was so lovely. So I want to mostly quit sugar. So that when I go out and someone says, should we go to Laddery for macarons? I can go, yeah, and really, really enjoy them because they're a real treat. I want birthday cakes to be an event again. Um, there was a time uh, a couple of years ago when Rich and I would start talking about my birthday cake about a month in advance <laughs> and we would go through and we would find what, um, what one he was going to make for me and that felt really good but it's not a novelty anymore. I want it to be a novelty again. I want to mostly quit and when I do have it to savour it to really, really savour it. So, I'm putting it out there. I am going to quit sugar. <laughs> I am going to quit sugar. It's going to happen. Um, I will give you guys an update every few weeks or so. Um, if it's something you would be interested in doing with me, let me know. I'll open up a thread in the Ravelry group um, where we can share tips how do you avoid the beautiful you know, plate of biscuits at work or the pastries um, at a business meeting? How do you do this? How? Inspiration and advice, always, always welcome. I also used to have sugar in my tea. <laughs> I don't anymore. I really, really don't like sugary tea. I never add sweetener to my tea anymore because then you can't taste the tea. So I'm hoping to train myself as I trained myself with tea. Thank you so much for spending some time with me this week. I hope you have an amazing week. 
I will see you next week for, as I said, probably a slightly shorter podcast because I will be away for a fair chunk of this week. But I will see you next week. I can't wait to have another cup of tea with you. Take care. Bye.